Hello, brand new physics students, and welcome. And my apologies for this person standing in front of you presenting this video. He's a wonderful man, Chris Shanks. I'm Mr. Warner. I am uh, escorting my youngest, oldest, oldest daughter to her first day of kindergarten. I'm actually just watching me get on the bus. Big day for me, um, but a big day for you. Welcome to physics. Uh, we're diving right in. I'll be back tomorrow to talk to you about policy and uh, grades and all that junk. But today, let's talk about um, our first unit of study. And to introduce that unit, um, I'm going to pose to you a strange hypothetical situation. And that is that here, this gray circle, let's assume that this is the only object in the universe. There is a universe a different universe with only one object in it. And what does that object do? Mr. Shanks, if you would pause for a moment and let the kids discuss that question for, oh, I don't know, 30 seconds. Go, discuss. All right, Shanks, you've pressed unpause. You've pressed play. So what kind of feedback do we have we gotten? Um, hard for me to gauge that, but I'll give you the answer. The answer is that, I mean, what this what this object does is kind of a not a great question. It doesn't really do anything because there's nothing else for it to do something to. But what it does do, what does happen at least, is that this mass that I'm going to call M creates a gravitational field in the space around it. What space? All the space. Now, so that's, the, that's really the only answer. Um, Einstein says that that gravitational field is a deformation of space and time, of the space-time fabric. That's a little more, uh, little more abstract than even this pretty abstract idea of a field. A field is not something you can touch or see, um, and it's not something that by itself does anything. But the presence of field can lead to some other very important phenomena. Um, so it's, we're going to talk about something pretty abstract uh, called field, in, in particular gravitational field. There are other kinds. Yell them out. Other kinds of fields. Anyone? Okay, fine. Um, but gravitational fields are where we're going to start this year. Again, that's going to lead us to the justification for some other important physics phenomena. Now, the next question is, well, what is the magnitude of this field depend on. Now magnitude is a word we're going to use a ton all year. It means in this case strength. Magnitude doesn't always mean strength but it always means something associated with the size of something. Um, not necessarily physical size but the numerical value of something. All right when things are anything that's a quantity is measurable and anything measurable has a certain magnitude. Now some things like gravitational fields have a strength or a magnitude, a size, and they also have a direction. All right, but right now we're going to talk about just the strength or the magnitude of this field. And the magnitude of the gravitational field made by this object depends on two things. All right, so what you've got to talk about for a minute or so is what things could affect how strong a gravitational field is. Discuss that question. Again, what two things can affect the strength of a gravitational field? Ready? Discuss. Shanks, pause. All right, you've unpaused. Um, and, you, of course, I can't hear what you've responded with, but here are the two answers. The two answers, the two quantities, the only two quantities that affect how strong a gravitational field is are the mass of the object.
that makes the field. And two is distance from that object. Those are the two things. All right. Um, this one, we're going to abbreviate M. This one, we're going to abbreviate R. This quantity R for us refers to a distance. All right. So, um, you know, a couple things we could do is we can say, well, here's a location in space, that dot. Here's a different location in space, a new dot. Here's a different location in space. Now, at all those locations in space, there is a gravitational field of some strength or of some magnitude. And also, at each one of those locations in space, the gravitational field points in a specific direction. Now, the specific direction is always toward the object that makes the field. And your intuition, well, your intuition will probably tell you, maybe tell you that the farther away we get from this object that makes the field, the weaker the field gets. That's a, just a fact. So here, at this first location, I'm going to draw an arrow. Uh, I don't like my arrow. I'm going to draw another arrow. Here's a location in space. I'm going to draw an arrow and label it G. And g is the variable we use to mean gravitational field. And if this is like, I don't know, say location 1, I'll call that g subscript 1. And here is location 2. And so g at location 2, because we're farther away than we were at location 1, g is weaker. The gravitational field made by this mass m at location 2 is weaker than the gravitational field made by mass m at location 1. And because the field is weaker, well, what I do is I draw this what's called a vector shorter, g2. So these arrows are called vectors. This is a vector that right now represents the size and the direction, or the strength and the direction, or the magnitude and the direction of gravitational field at location one as opposed to at, grav uh, at location two. It's weaker at location two, so the vector is shorter. It's even weaker at location three, so the vector is even shorter. But notice that all those vectors point toward the center of this object. I didn't do a great job on three, but you're probably a better artist. No, you're not a better. You might be as uh, you might be a great artist. Um, this is not really artistry. Anyway, if we draw a night, you know, come on, let's do the best we can. Fine. There's G three. These vectors all point toward the center of the mass that makes the field. And here we're representing that the farther away a location is from a mass, the weaker the field gets. All right. Now, we sort of touched on this a minute ago. What does the field do? Well, in a universe with one mass, the field don't do nothing. Except, as Einstein says, it creates a deformation in the space-time fabric. But uh, don't worry too much about that slash at all. Now, let's get a little bit deeper into some, um, some, some of the, well, algebraic relationships that go along with how strong gravitational fields are. So, what we said on the last page is that gravitational field strength depends on two things. One of them is the mass of an object that makes the field, and two is how far from that object you are. Now, in this case, we're looking at gravi... Notice, we're looking at gravitational field strength I'm going to say as a function of, which means as it relates to, well, notice, here's what, I'm, here's what we're not looking at field as it relates to. We're not 
looking at field strength as it relates to distance from the center, because in each of these three cases, the distance from the center of that object is the same. And notice, we don't talk about, you know, this this uh, case three as, a case as opposed to case two and case one. Um, this location at X is not closer to case three than it is in case one because even though this distance is shorter, that distance from surface is, is not one we, we care about. What we do care about is distance. When we say distance, we mean distance from center of object. That's super important. I'll give you your first uh, opportunity to be a good note taker. All right. If you just drew a dotted line and some stuff that says one, two, and three, but didn't write down R means distance from center of object to location of interest, then you are missed an opportunity to take good notes. Because you write down the same series of squiggles and dots that I do, doesn't mean you're taking good notes. Taking good notes means listening for things that sound important and writing them down. Okay, So R, by definition, distance from center of mass to location of interest. So what I am going to say here is let's assume that this object has a mass m. And let's assume that this object has a mass 2m. It doesn't look bigger, doesn't mean it's not more massive. right? It could be twice as dense and occupy the same amount of space. But if it's twice as dense, then it has twice the mass. Now this one, I don't know, let's just say it's uh, has it's maybe both more massive and uh, more uh, has more occupies more space, takes up more volume. So I don't know, that one has a mass of 5m arbitrarily. Well, that means that if we're looking at gravitational field strength as it relates to an object's mass, or what I say, what I call as a function of mass, well, we've got three data points. We've got that mass m, we've got that mass 2m, and we've got that mass 5m. So we're looking at gravitation. What I should do, let's, let's call this lowercase m. Let's look at gravitational field as a function of mass. Well, um, your intuition might tell you, and if it does, you're right, that well, if we say that there's a field strength, let's call it plain old G, when an object has a mass 2m, or sorry, when an object has a mass m, for an object that's twice as massive, as long as we are at the same distance away, well, the field strength is twice as strong. And therefore, for an object that's five times as massive, the field strength is five times as big. And that means that gravitational field strength is proportional, proportional to mass. I write that like this. G is proportional to mass. This symbol for me, this alpha, means is proportional to. Proportional to means that things change by the same factor. If you double one thing, you double something else. If you cut something in half, you cut the other thing in half also. All right? All right. What about looking at gravitational field strength as a function of, well, now let's look at cases one, two, and three. Now these cases, there's a difference not in the mass of the object that makes the field, but there's a difference in how far from that object we are. And in particular, how far from the center of the object. So here is what I'll call R1. Here is what I'll call R2. Here is what I'll call R3. And not only that, what I'm trying to do here is be a little specific about how big R2 is as compared to R1. And if you're a spatial kind of relationship person, you might notice that R2 is twice R1. 
and you might notice that R3 is approximately three times as big as R1. So we're saying, let's look at gravitational field at a certain distance away, well, at twice that distance away, and at three times that distance away. All right, here's how this works. At a distance R1 away, oh boy, oh gosh. At a distance R1 away, we have to arbitrarily R1 say that there's a field strength. Let's call it G1. And there's a data point. When we look at a distance twice as far away, R2, well, we did say before that quantita or sorry, qualitatively, the field gets weaker. All right, but guess what? When we double the distance, the field doesn't get half as strong. The field happens to get, there's half, there's half of that. The field gets one quarter as strong, D1 over four. And there's a new data point on our graph. And when we go, so this is, again, twice as big as R1. When we go to R3, that's three times as big as R1. See if you can guess what happens. Now, I'm going to remind you, we doubled the distance, but what we didn't do was decrease the field strength by a factor of two. We decrease the field strength by a factor of four. So see if you can figure out what happens to field strength. See if, I mean, and again, I get it. I'm asking you to make a guess here, all right? And that guess is based at least in one piece of data. So it's not a completely wild guess, but I'm asking you to take a bit of an intellectual risk. Welcome to AP Physics. So take, uh, you know, 20 seconds, Shanks will pause, it's a beautiful man that he is, and you'll see if you can come up with what happens to the field strength three times farther away than our original location. Pause, Shanks. Welcome back. You probably came up with one of two options. Some of you probably said it's either, maybe it's, uh, um, well, this is, you know, 4 is 2 times this 2, so maybe it's G1 over 6 when we go 3 times. But, all right, okay. Uh, some of you perhaps came up with something different because it ain't this. What it is, is when we go 3 times farther away, the field strength gets weaker, not by a factor of 3, and not by a factor of 2 times 3, but by a factor of 3 squared. It gets one ninth as big. I don't have a easy, so that'll be an eighth. So the ninth is a little less than that. So, so yeah, here's G1 over nine, and this is a new data point for us. And so this graph looks something like this. Oh boy, not that's not great, but it looks something like that. <laughs> uh, nope, still not great, but you know, artistry. Oh, yeah, fine. And this is a weirder relationship. All right, but we're going to get to what that relationship is in a minute. But notice that when we say G1 over 4, that's the same as G1 over 2 squared, over that 2 squared. When we say G1 over 9, that's the same as G1 over 3 squared. And so this says, whatever we do to distance, we do, first of all, the opposite. R got bigger by a factor of 3. G got smaller, but not by a factor of 3, by a factor of 3 squared, right? G got, or sorry, R in this case got bigger by a factor of 2. G got not bigger, but smaller, and by a factor of not 2, but 2 squared. All right? It's called an inverse square relationship. The inverse is one thing gets bigger, something else gets smaller. The square thing is, well, you square that factor. 
All right, so we're going to tie that together here. All right. We can actually now come up with an expression, and to me an expression means an equation um, for how strong gravitational field is. So if we say arbitrarily there's a location in space, and we say that this object has some mass m, and this location in space by definition is a distance r from the center of that object, well then g, remember we said is proportional to the mass of this object, and that means that, well, we can say there's mass like that, because if mass gets bigger, then g gets bigger. But if r gets bigger, then g gets smaller. But remember, they don't get bigger and smaller by the same factor. There's a square factor in there. So there's what's called that inverse square relationship. And that captures all of, that captures the stuff that we've talked about. That captures the fact that if you double the, ma the mass, then you double the gravitational field. If you uh, quintuple the mass, then you quintuple the uh, gravitational field strength. It also captures the this whole thing where if R gets twice as big, then G gets twice squared as small. And if you triple the R, then you divide G by nine. So it captures that stuff. What it doesn't capture is it's not going to give you the right answer. If I gave you a planet's mass and how far from that planet you were, you're not going to get the right answer if you use this. And that's because sometimes in science, there are constants that do a couple of things. They make the numbers work out right, and they make the units work out right. All right, and G, big G, here's another area for potential, uh, potential confusion. Big G is called the universal... Oops, that's not an I. The, that's an I. Universal gravitational constant. It has an accepted value. Um, the value, this value is wacky. Uh, and it came from some theory and it came from some experimentation. And people have um, done their best to 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 uh, what's the word, verify the theory with more experimentation and um, the accepted value of G right now is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. So that part makes the numbers work out right for a given planet mass and distance from that planet. Multiplying those numbers by this little tiny number will give you the right field strength. But it also has these units. Oh boy. Newton meter squared per kilogram squared. And using those units in conjunction with the units of mass and the units of distance, that's going to make the units of g, this little g, gravitational field strength, come out right. So well, this is, you know, a lot of you are saying, what in God's name is that? Well, I'm going to show you algebraically in sort of a factor labeling, not even a factor labeling, but just kind of a straight algebraically way why these units end up giving us the answer that we want for the units of G. And when I say G, I mean the units of gravitational field. Okay, so this is an equation that finds you the gravitational field strength at any location away from, or any distance away from an object of any mass m. Now, um, let's look at a couple different ways to represent uh, or a couple different, I guess, um, perspectives on, say, Earth's gravitational field. The, the primary reason that we're starting this year, that you're starting this year with the idea of gravity, is because we want to talk about two main um, 
really two main phenomena that have to do with gravity, all right? And they, both of those phenomena have to do with, well, what is the strength of Earth's gravitational field? Well, as you know, um, as, as I think, I hope you can um, justify right now, Earth's gravitational field doesn't have a strength because we could draw it, you know, if we look way far away from Earth or, you know, you know, a huge area of space around Earth, I mean, we could draw the Earth's gravitational field like this, where these are all what we call field lines. And this just represents a couple of important things. It represents, one, that Earth's gravitational field points towards the center of Earth. Any object, well, every object that makes a gravitational field, which every object does, the field that that object makes points towards its center. All right. So this, you know, the direction part is pretty easy. What this thing also shows, this diagram also shows, which is nice, is that out here, where field lines are far apart, field is weaker. In here, where field lines get closer together, field gets stronger. In here, where field lines are the are even closer, field gets stronger. So we can tell from this general map of Earth's gravitational field where field is weak and strong. All right. What we're going to focus a bunch on early in the year is things that happen, uh, quote, near the surface of Earth. And so what we do is let's focus or let's imagine zooming way in on that little section of the surface of the Earth there. And that part's still a little curved. So we'll zoom in on a little tiny section of that. And that part starts to look a little less curved. And then we zoom in on a little tiny section of that. And eventually we get this. All right, this straight line is a representation of one tiny, tiny little section of the Earth's surface like say the ground that you're standing on sitting on that I'm standing on all right and if we imagine well what are these lines what are my gravitational field lines here look like when we zoom way the heck in or when we're really looking at a tiny little section there well they look like this they're all pointing quote down well where does down mean down means towards the center of the Earth, but since you know we're in a, such a tiny section of the Earth's surface, it's we don't see the Earth's curvature, and therefore towards the center of the Earth just looks like down, right? And so now look at this. Remember our little weaker, stronger, stronger. Well, look at this. What do you notice about those field lines? Well, they don't get any closer or farther apart. That means that here, close to the Earth's surface, the Earth's gravitational field is pretty constant. And if I tell you a couple of important facts, one is the mass of the Earth. Well, let's do that. The mass of the Earth is 5.98 times 10 to the 24th kilograms and if I tell you well if I tell you notice if I want to know G on the surface of the earth what R do we use well our R is the distance from the center of the earth to the earth's surface well that's called the earth's radius and the Earth's radius is 6.37 times 10 to the 6th uh, meters. Why don't you use 6.38? Use 6.38, sure. What you're going to do, what I'd like you to do, is find, you have kind of two jobs. One is find the numerical answer. What is the field strength at the surface of Earth. Find the number. And then what I want you to do also is investigate with, now this means not mass, but meters. 
All right, that's a unit of mass, the kilogram. This is a unit of distance, right? Because R is a distance. This is a unit of mass, the kilogram. And remember from the last page that here are the crazy, well, numerical value and the units of G. I want you to put everything together in our expression for G and calculate the strength of Earth's gravitational field at the surface of Earth. I want an answer that's a number with units. Okay? That's your job. When I see you next, you will have that answer. Got it? Welcome to physics, people. It's going to be a great year. See ya!